this point, based on everything that's happened, uh, Bernie and Tulsi, that's it. That's the only, that's the only two candidates, in my opinion, um, that matter. That's the only two candidates that I would like to vote for, um, in, in any capacity, uh, if that is the ticket that ends up being on the Democratic ballot uh, for 2020, I'm in. I'm in. That's my that's my um, that's my ideal uh, situation, Bernie Tulsi, um, and I'll tell you. Uh, and 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 we'll we'll do- talk about it a, l- a little bit in, in, into this episode. But um, the reason I think Bernie and Tulsi are the best is because they are the only two candidates that are authentic. Um, that haven't uh, gotten caught up in the uh, profit-driven motives of being a politician. Um, they're both kind of talking about domestic issues, kind of talking about propping up the middle class, uh, switching the economy from being this trickle-down, top-heavy economy to a bottom-up, middle-out economy. Uh, which a lot of economists have talked about. Um, R- Dr. Richard Wolff has talked about it being necessary that we have a middle out economy. Um, I hope I don't butcher this man's name, but Anand Giridharadas has also talked about having a bottom up middle out economy, strengthening and bolstering the middle class, changing our labor structure uh, to be a little bit more fair and equal and understanding um, and, and more compassion driven. So um, I think. Bernie and Tulsi talk about that in in slightly different ways, but I think the message is still on point. The way that Bernie talks about it is by um, improving some of the social systems that we have in place, right? Like uh, like Medicare for all, uh, erasing student debt, making public college free, uh, tuition free public college, um, and the way that he would do that by restructuring the um, economic system by making. Uh, basically, the top one percent of the one percent, the the uber wealthy, the Jeff Bezos, is the Bill Gates, the uh, the whoever's running Apple now. I don't remember his name, Tim something or the other, right? That guy. Uh, they would all pay their fair share in taxes instead of being able to hide them on uh, on offshore islands, on offshore accounts, uh, like the Caymans. You know, um, we 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 had the the Panama Papers reveal that a couple years ago, and so. Uh, how would we quote unquote pay for these things is by restructuring the economic system so that um, you know these people pay their fair share in taxes and contribute to the country that they are currently doing business in contri- con- contribute to the country um, where uh, they are selling their products in and so on and so forth right uh, if you're a massive you know giant uber rich uh, corporation you should be able to uh, be able to do something like that. So that's one of Bernie's plans is kind of the restructuring of the way this this capitalistic economy works by putting these sort of restrictions. The way Tulsi talks about it is by reallocating funds from the military. We have an overinflated military. I know we've talked about it a lot uh, on this podcast, but but it's true, right? And, and that's one of the things that Tulsi talks about. She talks about reallocating funds, um, spending the money wisely, spending the money to take it away from the military, keep keep the military to be a standing defense military, so that if something does happen, um, you know, let's say I don't know, I don't know if this would ever happen, because you know, even even their leader is kind of a uh, a, a neoliberal, pro capitalist, pro corporatist douchebag uh, with a pretty face. Let's say Canada decides to invade America, you know, they're like, fuck you, we're gonna uh, we're we're taking Niagara Falls back. You know, that's ours now. Well, the whole fucking thing is ours. Fuck you, Buffalo. You don't get shit. You don't get Niagara Falls. We're expanding our borders because it's Canadian, right? Well, I'm not expecting like a full-on, full-fledged invasion. Like, I'm, they're not coming down and being like, Lake Erie is ours too. They're going to be like, we'll share Lake Erie, but give us the rest of the falls, right? Like, let's say that kind of shit happens. Uh, a standing defense military will be able to push back against something like that. And that's really what we what 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 the military is supposed to be there for um, is if there is any sort of an invasion, if there's, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, major threats within the country that they would be able to to take care of something like that. So her proposition, the, the way that she kind of frames a lot of this stuff is to have a standing defense military. And what that would cost is a fraction, a fraction of what the uh, military budget is now. And the rest of that money can be reallocated 
to uh, prepping up the middle class, to uh, fixing a, a, an unjust, unequal system, right? To, to pay for a Medicare for all, um, which her Medicare for all plan is a Medicare for all plan. It's similar to what Australians have, where everybody opts in and the private insurance companies exists primarily um, for sort of the fluff, right? For the, for the additional things, like if you want... If you want to go out of network, then you have to get the private insurance in order to get yourself covered and that sort of stuff. But everybody opts in to the Medicare for all system. So, so it doesn't have that uh, glaring loophole um, that a lot of people were worried about that would let the private insurance companies redictate the terms and uh, overstress the system and, and get them to go, see, see, it doesn't work. Like, it, no, you, everybody opts in. Everybody's into it. Everybody has it. Um, so that's why those two candidates are the ones that uh, that I want to vote for. They're the two candidates that I think genuinely stand by the people. Their records in uh, Congress is very consistent. Um, their message has been very consistent. Uh, they are constantly attacked and smeared by uh, the the Democratic establishment. The, the, uh, we're we're going to address here in a bit. Um, and, and being that they are attacked by the Democratic establishment tells me um, that they are, they are authentic. Their plans are dangerous. Their plans are dangerous to, um, to the elites, to the rich, to the people that think um, money is speech. All those kind of people, they are worried. Um, so they go out and smear them, and they go out and attack them. They try to uh, warp these ideas and bend them to, to mean something different. So that's why uh, I'm, you know... I, I am supporting and putting my weight behind uh, Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard for uh, the White House uh, in any capacity. If it's a Bernie Tulsi ticket, if it's a Tulsi Bernie ticket, um, that's I've been saying that from the start. But now it, it seems more and more like there it, there really isn't um, an alternative for me. I am going to be touring all across the country. Uh, if you want to check out my entire tour schedule. Uh, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. But January 29th, I'm going to be at the 730 Tavern in Boston, Massachusetts. January 31st, I'm at the Appohattian Theater in Portland, Maine. February 6th, I'm at the Vermont Law School in South Royalton, Vermont. February 7th, I'm at the Markey Theater in Middlebury, Vermont. February 8th, I'm at the Revelry Theater in Burlington, Vermont. February 9th, I'm at the Woolen Mills Comedy Club in Bridgewater, Vermont. February 10th, I'm at the Skinny Pancake in Burlington, Vermont. February 11th, I'm at the Boulder Coffee House in Rochester, New York. February 15th, I'm at the Third Street Gallery in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like I said, you can catch my entire tour schedule at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I'm going to be touring all around the country, uh, working on Politely Angry for the first half of the year, and then working on a new show after it's recorded uh, for the second half of the year, as well as touring with my good friend Lee Camp for his book release tour. Very honored to be a part of that. Um, but like I said, I am recording my album. Uh, I will be recording my album on March 20th at the Reliable Tavern in Washington, D.C., and March 21st at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I've also got dates lined up for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival in Pittsburgh in the first week of April that I'm going to be recording my album. We are finalizing those dates and the venue information for that, so stay tuned. That will be coming out very soon. Uh, but another way that you can support this show is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Krishmohan ha ha. Uh, by becoming a patron, uh, not only are you a people sponsor of the show, but you get exclusive unreleased tracks that are not released to the public. They are early versions of some bits. They are bits that never make it onto a stand-up album, uh, storytelling sets, um, and you also, uh, you also get uh, early access to some of the multi-part Forkful of Noodles that I uh, put out every single year as well. Uh, and it all starts at $2 a month, just two bucks a month. And you get all of this stuff, uh, and you get to support, 
uh, a DIY, socially conscious, independent, anti-establishment podcast. Uh, so we are we are specifically sponsored by you guys. So go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, if you can and have the means to, uh, to donate. And uh, uh, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. And you, again, you can go to my website for all of the information on my tour dates, past episodes of this podcast, uh, videos, and so much more. RamanNoodlesComedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thanks so much.